So is Elon Musk stepping down as CEO of Tesla? Well, it is in the realm of possibility. Take a look at this. You can see here the headline. Uh, this is from a couple weeks ago. Tesla board member says Elon Musk identified potential successor as CEO. Um, one of the things that I want you to understand is that human beings have their limits. <laughs> this person can't do everything all at one time. And um, you guys know he took over Twitter and there is a possibility that he's looking to shoulder some of the burden of Tesla onto other people. Um, this was just reported today. I, I've, you know, like I've heard rumors about these kind of things before, but I don't mention anything until I start to see you know more concrete evidence. And th this is something that you can see here, a headline, Elon Musk brings Tesla's China chief to Texas to run the Gigafactory. He's starting to pass some of the uh, essentially responsibility onto other people, right? This is not a crazy thing because you can't just like leave a company and like, you know, abandon it completely. I mean, you can, but it's not really great to. Um, and, uh, you know, Twitter keeps eating up more and more time. And so he keeps asking people for more and more help. Um, moreover, this is a really interesting point to understand. Um, Elon Musk did not found Tesla. And I'll repeat for those of you who don't know, Elon Musk did not found Tesla. Um, these are actually the original founders of Tesla right here. Uh, Martin Ebenhard and uh, Mark uh, Tarpenning. Um, you can uh, look it up for yourself. I'm not just making up random things. Um, they founded the company, uh, was it 2003, 2004? Elon came on board when he started investing money in 2004. You guys can all look it up for yourself, but he did not found the company. And um, the reason why that matters is it because uh, Elon can go from company to company to company, you know, PayPal and then Tesla, and then who knows, maybe like he's like, I want to do Twitter because I love Twitter. Y you never know with this guy. Um, and uh, moreover, he's been bringing over employees from SpaceX, Tesla, and Boring uh, to do projects on Twitter. Essentially, the reporting is that um, workers are authorized to work on Twitter. And this matters because um, if people say, oh, no, this is not this is not true. It's not true at all. I mean, we have names of the people. <laughs> like, like right here, uh, CNBC did some crazy reporting where like literally we have names of where they're coming from. So like um, he's been pulling people from autopilot uh, over at Tesla to go work on Twitter, pulling people from battery, pulling people from infrastructure. You guys can see right here. Um, this is uh, other people he's pulling from SpaceX. He's pulling HR people, the CFO, I guess, and head strategic acquisitions, director of tech. This is a, from SpaceX people are pulling over, um, pulling people from the boring company. These are all the names of the people you guys can see all of here. And um, for me, this is a, is a problem, especially for those of you who are fans of SpaceX, fans of Tesla, fans of boring company or whatever. Um, you don't necessarily want to see resources sucked over to Twitter, unless you do, and I get it. There's, there's, you know, Elon Musk pumpers out there and say, oh, well, this is all about freedom of speech. Screw Tesla. Who cares about electric vehicles? This is about freedom of speech. <laughs> I mean, all right. I mean, if, if that, if that's the world you want to live in, but um, if I were an investor, a heavy investor of Tesla, I would be pretty pissed if I find out like all of the best people from Tesla are moving over to Twitter. I would be pissed. I, I don't think that's a crazy thing to say. If I'm putting money into Tesla, I'm like, dude, put your money where, where where I'm putting my money, but evidently he's diverting resources. And this is a really interesting information. And the other question I'll ask you guys is, um, uh, what do you think about sleeping at the office? Now, I remember Elon Musk originally said to people over at Twitter, he said, hey, you better work hardcore. You better work 24 seven for me uh, or leave. <laughs> this is part of Twitter 2.0. And I laugh because it's like, sometimes people are like, Chris, don't you know, this is about freedom of speech. Elon Musk is a hero. And I'm like, all right, well, if he's really a hero, I mean, go work 24 for seven for someone and help someone become even more rich while you don't get anything. And, and here's the thing, guys, this is crazy stuff. The story keeps getting more crazy is if you take a look at this, um, he was uh, telling people, guys, we're gonna put beds and stuff into the Twitter headquarters. These are pictures coming out just a few hours ago of the beds in said uh, Twitter headquarters. And um, evidently people were saying it looks like a hotel room. And um, this came, there's a wardrobe right there. And this came to light because um, true story, um, they reported it and tweeted it out to him. He said, uh, here's a tweet here. It says, um, uh, breaking San Francisco building inspectors are launching an investigation into reports. Twitter has converted several office rooms at headquarters into sleeping quarters for employees. Uh, we need to make sure the building is used as intended. So basically, we're concerned about zoning laws and building codes, and Elon Musk tweeted back. So the city of San Francisco attacks companies providing beds for tired employees instead of making sure kids are safe from fentanyl. What are your priorities? So he basically tweets back, he's not denying it. He's just attacking him saying, well, why don't you care about kids? Don't care about my beds and my offices. And it's like, what the heck? And so these are just, these are the pictures of the beds and the sleeping conditions over at the Twitter headquarters. You can see the desk right there next to couches and stuff like that. And guys, I mean, I, I get it. You might love Elon Musk and stuff like that, but you know, there's some of us who are older and some of us who have families and some of us who don't necessarily want to live 24 seven at our jobs and want to go home sometimes. 
That that might that's not a crazy thing to say. Uh, if, if you disagree, if you want to work at your job 24 for 7, um, please write in the comments, say 24 7, I want to work for my boss and tells me everything uh, to do and, and, and just, <laughs> I'm just laughing, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. But I, I, I just think it's weird though because there's Tesla pumpers forever and, and I just have to address that. Um, other thing that's kind of crazy too, this, this guy, the story is just nuts. Um, so now the people who uh, essentially are teamed with Elon Musk to raise the money to buy Twitter, they're getting kind of nervous because they had to do, it was like a $13 billion in debt on Twitter. And you can see, read the headlines here. Elon Musk bankers consider Tesla margin loans to cut risky Twitter debt. So the idea is that Twitter took on this debt and because Twitter's not a money maker and, and they're losing money and advertisers are leaving and like, you know, Elon Musk is a, a bit crazy. They're worried if, the, if essentially Twitter's good for the money. And so the idea is that is Elon Musk gonna sell a bunch of Tesla stock or put Tesla stock up as collateral to say, hey guys, you know, the, the, I'm good for the money, but I mean, <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. Okay, we'll read the we'll, we'll, we'll read we'll read the um, we'll read the details of this thing because, but guys, this stuff's crazy. Um, Elon Musk bankers are considering replacing some of the high interest debt he layered on Twitter. So they brought a bunch of money. The interest is too high, and it's like 13 billion. So this is not small money. Um, with new margin loans backed by Tesla stock that he's personally responsible for repaying, according to people who are familiar with uh, knowledge of the matter. The margin loans are one of several options the Morgan Stanley-led bank and Musk advisors have discussed to soften the burden of a $13 billion uh, of debt that Musk used to purchase the social media company in October. And this is a true story, guys. Sometimes people write in comments, they say, oh, Chris, you're so dumb. Elon Musk is rich. He doesn't care about $13 billion. Who cares about $13 billion? And, and I'm always just like, do you, do you guys like believe the words that come out of your mouth? <laughs> I, mean, like, I mean, I mean, like serious. Like, like, do you really believe the words that come out of your mouth? Do you think, honestly, think there's a human being on the planet that would say, you know what? It's only thirteen billion dollars. You know what? Twitter. It's only it's only forty four billion dollars. Like, like, do you guys understand how much money that is? That's like massive amount of money. But I get it. For Tesla pumpers, he doesn't care about money. <laughs> I'm, I'm making fun of you because you guys sound really, really stupid. I'm, I'm keeping it real. We're talking about a lot of money, billions of dollars. I, I'm telling you, human beings care about this kind of stuff, right? If we're talking about, you know, maybe a million dollars, not a big deal to, to Musk, because it's a million dollars. To him, maybe that's not a big deal. But billions of dollars is a lot of money. And Morgan Stanley, they care about this money too. I'm, I'm, I promise you, people care about this kind of money. And they're worried about whether or not they're gonna see that money again. People do care about this stuff. I, it's like, I, I don't know how, how, often, how strongly I have to say it, but I just wanna, you know, for those of you who are younger, this is how the world works. People care about money. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who tells you that they don't, they're lying to you. It's just not true. People care about money. God, billions of dollars. Jeez. Um, okay, 13 billion of debt that Musk used to purchase a social media company, said people, and then it says not to be identified because discussions are confidential. And they got to keep this stuff secret because people at Morgan Stanley, basically, they want to leak this stuff out to the press because they're irritated with Musk. But like, you know, this is just reality is they may lose their jobs and, and lose their $13 billion, right? So that they're basically expressing frustration the best the way they can. Um, without losing their jobs. Here, here's more. The banks have been unable, that means they're trying to do something, unable to find buyers for the Twitter debt, right? People don't, people don't trust it. Um, and are facing a prospect of, of realizing steep losses. Musk, meanwhile, is under increased pressure to turn around the finance of the company that already struggling when he and his partners bought it. Musk put up billions of his own dollars selling Tesla shares to make the purchase and pledging more stock to prop up Twitter would now be risky. It could give Twitter breathing room it needs to operate around. Or it can mean Musk is just throwing good money after bad. And um, here's the other thing too, which is interesting. This is the last point we'll take a look at here. The financial discussions have so far focused on the, how to replace three billion of unsecured debt on which Twitter pays an interest rate of 11.75%. That's the maximum banks had guaranteed Musk when they agreed to finance the acquisition in April. The people said it's unclear that the rate would be uh, on the margin loan. So, um, and, I, and, I, and I'm, you know, guys, you can read numbers, right? You know, imagine if you took a $3 billion loan and you had to pay 11, like 0.75% in interest, that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot on, you know, even if you just say buy a car at, you know, $30,000 or $40,000 or how much your car costs, 11%, you know, is a lot. But imagine if like, you know, whatever you're doing is like $3 billion <laughs> in this unsecured debt. So that's why they're like, say, hey, yo, give us some collateral of like Tesla stock. And um, I, I think people are kind of nervous. People don't want to lose billions of dollars. That is a real thing. And so I, I'm just making fun of you Tesla pumpers because I, I don't know what world you live in where someone doesn't care about billions of dollars, but I get it. This is about free speech. <laughs> I get it. Um, so another thing too that, that um, I've talked about before on this channel where I told you guys from the very beginning that, you know, uh, Elon Musk is a human being, right? He's not a Superman. He's, he's, he's not a superhero. He, he can't, you know, do everything. And, 
you know, one of the things is that this is a real thing. He's complaining about that he's too busy, right? You can see the headlines, Musk complains of too much work after taking over Twitter. And essentially what it was is he was talking over at like the, um, the, the was it the B20 summit here, group of 20, yeah, you can see right here. And um, he's saying, uh, I have too much work on my plate, that's for sure. I'm working the absolute most I can, morning to night, seven days a week. And it's just not sustainable. And this is sort of the question I have for you is, um, do you think that someone can run multiple companies and do a good job? And also too, do you think someone can have 10 kids and be a good father? Is that a realistic thing that people can do? And the reason why I always mention that Elon Musk and I are about the same age, went to the same school, is that I know these people are human beings, right? So for some people who've never met these kind of people, they, they think, oh, they're on TV, therefore that they're like superhuman and they can do incredible things. But oftentimes, guys, this is sort of how people lose in life is, is they you know, believe in this fantasy world too much. The same way that people, you know, believed in the FTX stuff and Sam Bankman fried and said, oh my God, guys, look at, look at, you know, uh, Kevin O'Leary and Graham Stephan are all in FTX. It must be really, really good. And, and this is sort of why people lose is they, they kind of turn off their brains and get sucked into the, the hype. And um, unfortunately, we're kind of seeing what's happening with all the Tesla pumpers and the Elon Musk pumpers. And, you know, they're coming back down the earth and like, wow, let me think about that for a minute. Can a person really run multiple companies? Can a person really have multiple kids? You know, is, is it realistic that a person doesn't care about $44 billion, you know? <laughs> and, and every day, you know, Elon's tweeting out, hey guys, pay me eight bucks, help me save my company. And, um, you know, the Tesla stock is down 56% uh, year to date. And um, it, it's, it's, this is sort of why people essentially fail uh, at these kind of things is because they, they live in these weird fantasy worlds and, and they try to reconcile that with, you know what they see like i literally see the numbers that tesla's down you know 56 percent i can also see that the p ratio is really really high um if you don't know what that means that's the price of the stock compared to how much a company earns and the basic gist of it is that if you look at a p at like say a 53 is um do you think their earnings are going to grow say 60 percent say 50 percent right you want to have a general sort of guideline there before in the past um Tesla's PE was like some crazy numbers, like 120, stuff like that. And essentially what that means is that if you think that the stock is at a fair price is that you think they're gonna be doubling their profits uh, you know, every year going into a recession, going into a period where materials, lithium is more expensive and, and going to a time when interest rates are going up and like people are gonna be like, you know what? That Tesla car is kind of expensive and I don't wanna be paying, you know, 12% interest on these things. And you know, it, it's, it, it is reaching some people, right? You read these headlines that some people are irritated with yeah, Elon Musk and what's going on with Twitter. And, you know, my, my feeling on is with, with the Elon thing, I am totally cool if he wants to build spaceships and try to go to Mars and, and pursue those kind of things or try to build out Tesla. That's that's fine. Um, when you start taking on too much stuff, it's just, it, it's very, really tough, right? It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, you don't you don't see like successful people and this, I'm keeping it really real, um, working 24 seven all of the time. It's just, it, it can't it can't be done there, there's only so much a person can do and he's probably having nervous breakdowns over there I'm, I'm, I'm sure he is now in public he's looking happy and stuff like that but I'm sure there are so many fires to put out um, that he's having a lot of stress and this is sort of like this is something that I, I mentioned to you guys before and um, several times is when, when someone's stressed out and stuff like that they they can't control themselves and it's just like they tweet out a bunch of crazy stuff, which is something he does, or they become erratic with their decisions. And like, for example, hey, everyone, let's bring Kanye West back to Twitter. Oh, crap, Kanye West says a bunch of crazy stuff and tweeting out swastikas. Okay, let's kick him off Twitter. <laughs> like, like when, when you're doing these kind of stuff that that's completely unplanned and uncalculated and, and you're ignoring advisors or your advisors and everything is just starts quitting and leaving, uh, it's not a good sign. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there that, that you know, sort of believe in this fantasy world that people like Elon and stuff like that are, are superhuman. And I want you to understand that <laughs> we're at the end of the day, we're all human. We all have our limits. And what happens, though, is that for some people like Elon, um, he surrounds himself with people that are basically kissing up to him all the time because he's rich, right? That's what happens. Sometimes when you get rich, the, the, it's very difficult to find people that will uh, tell you that you're wrong. Also, too, for some people, uh, if you're so rich and so powerful and someone tells you wrong, you just fire them and then you just slowly only collect people that are yes people, right? And that's not necessarily a great thing. And some people are all about yes people and some people aren't. Um, I am perfectly fine uh, being wrong. Why am I fine being wrong? Because I, I want ultimately to do the best what would be good for a company organization. And one of the best things that you can do is listen to your advisors and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it depends. And, and I get it, guys. I totally get it. You know, there's books out there about Elon and every day there's people on 
YouTube pumping Elon and saying, oh my God, this is the leadership style of Elon, et cetera. And I wanna tell you something about the leadership style of Elon. This is a true story. So um, oftentimes he'll uh, commend the Chinese work ethic, right, talking about in China, uh, because in Chinese factories, they may have people working, you know, over at like say the Tesla Shanghai factory working 12 hour days, six days a week and be like, oh yeah, Chinese people work great. But like, do you think workers really want to work 12 hour days, six days a week? Do you do you think that, right? And I, I'm, I'm, it's a serious question. And, and this is sort of something like that, that is a bit disturbing about sort of, and this has always been a long running debate on, you know, how do we think about capitalism? Because oftentimes um, much of, you know, many, many companies out there, you could talk about Nike, for example, uses the labor of people from various countries to work long shifts, multiple days. Or you take a look at Apple, does the same thing, long shifts, multiple days, uh, to where you know people's essentially mental health isn't so good, and 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 I do you know talk about these things because I want you to understand that sometimes wealth is built on exploitation of other people or of workers in countries where they just don't have as much income. It's it's a un, un like an uncomfortable topic to talk about, but I, I'm just saying that when you sort of see it, sort of how can I say that culture bleed into U.S. culture? Say for example, having beds at Twitter. Um, yeah, it might sound fun and stuff if you're in college and you're like 16, like, oh yeah, I want to look for Elon Musk. It's going to be so cool. We're going to sleep in the office together and high five every morning at breakfast. But like you get older and you know, this idea of work-life balance is a real thing. You know, you might want to have kids. You might want to have a family. You might want to go on a date. You might want to go see a movie, but just imagine like, for example, when the new Avatar movie comes out, right? Which is my wife and I are going to go see it right on opening. But like, imagine like you, you bought tickets to go see Avatar. You're going to go see a thing and your boss, Elon calls you and says, Hey, I need you to come to the office because like we're messing with like, uh, you know, Kanye West. And we need to like kick him off, come back to the office. We got, we got to solve this together. And like, just, you know, think about how you feel and then you can't go to the movie. So this is the sort of stuff that I want you guys to, to think about when we, we talk about these topics on the channel is try to learn like how the world really works. And some people unfortunately don't have your back. And I think Elon is one of these people. He's having this crazy meltdown and even Morgan Stanley is kind of like, dude, you know, we got to figure out what to do about this $13 billion. <laughs> so that's what's going on with Twitter. Love to hear your thoughts on this thing. And um, uh, it's a crazy world. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.